This is the Tactile Knife Company Chubacabra. And because of this knife, I'm finally ready to recommend a Magna Cut folder. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. This is the Tactile Knife Company Chubacabra, and I am such a fan of this knife so far. This is gonna be an overview, not a review. I haven't had the knife long enough to do a full-fledged review, and I wouldn't even wanna fake the funk and pretend like that's something that's gonna be done here today. Let's just start with the bottom line up front. This knife costs $249. If knives over $200 don't work for you, thank you for clicking the video. I catch you soon. If you're trying to figure out if Magna Cut knives work for you and you don't know which one that you want, it's time for me to explain why this pricing is fair and reasonable and why you may want to consider this knife. Not necessarily saying that it is the go-to choice of knife for Magna Cut, but there are a lot of scenarios. $249, this is not Tactile Knife's first venture into Magna Cut. They have the Ma the Maverick came out in G10. I don't know if, it, I think it had my card as well, but I know for a fact it came out in G10. That thing's $249. Sometimes you can even catch it on Blade HQ for $199. Of course, they have their Archer, which is this panty dropper of a titanium beast which costs over $500 but it has incredible milling and then you get the tactile knife chubacabra this is a named after a mythical creature that was in the United States that was known for possibly eating the blood of livestock specifically goats this is a very interesting knife I'm going to put the specs up on the screen because I don't want to be a spec reader my job is to really show you what this knife looks like in a three-dimensional state because if you've seen the instagram live that the company came out with you see the pictures on the internet sometimes that's not enough for you to make a purchasing decision so i'm here to help you decide whether or not you want to make a purchase of this and something or, or if you want to look at a competitor or whatnot first let's talk about magna cut and the craziness about it doctor i think it's loran thomas came out with magna cut 20 in 2019 in a collaboration with crucible and it has been just storming the market super heavy ever since and it offers so much to it it offers corrosion resistance hardness tough it, toughness so you're kind of getting the the toughness of an outdoor fixed blade steel that you might want to take with you like a 4v but then you are getting the premium steel such as something like a cpm 20 cv and you're all getting it in this relatively new steel of Magna Cut. And the reason a Magna Cut does cost a little bit more pricey is because it's mo mostly put into premium knives. I think as more companies are starting to use it more and more, the pricing will start to come down. Uh, suffice it to say, it doesn't necessarily take new tooling to actually manipulate and work with with Magna Cut, at least according to the manufacturers that I've talked to or the companies that I've talked to that have used it, but it's more that it's being used in a certain market of knives. $249 for this knife puts it in an extremely fair and reasonable price point for if you're looking for something like this. What we talked about what Magna Cut is. Do you need Magna Cut? Probably not. But do you want Magna Cut? You may, you may want it. And if you are looking for something that holds an edge longer, it has great corrosion resistance. You can uh, you can use it as a daily folder. You can also take it with you camping or hunting. Accidentally leave it outside of the campsite, allow it to get dew and all the other stuff on it, and it probably be just fine. Then you may want to venture into something of Magna Cut. Now I've had I own very few Magna Cut knives. The ones that I own, I've used extensively and I have not had to sharpen them. Um, so if that's something that you're looking for, you may want to look into Magna Cut as well. So you made the decision that you do want a Magna Cut knife. So now you start to think, do you want fixed or do you want folders or whatever? So you got the tactile Chubacabra. You also have something like the MKC. This is the Blackfoot. This is a Magna Cut, obviously. And this is a fantastic, arguably, this is a fantastic EDC fixed blade knife. Full tang, fantastic. This is a uh, more of a straight back kind of drop point versus the sheet foot. And then if you're looking for a straight up folder, you could always look into the Hogue Deca. Now, this is not the 
Magnica version. This is the CPM 20 CV version, but let's just pretend like I have the Magnica because I'm not going to go run out and buy it. But Hogue is making something like that. Now, I've just presented to you knives that are all made in the USA. That's another price point for the pricing of Magna Cut knives. The reason that you get the pricing is brand materials, the materials that surround the actual steel itself, the country of origin, the opening mechanism, locking mechanism as well, the design. And if you combine all those together, that can increase the price of a knife. For instance, the Hogue Deca Magna Cut on Blade HQ, you can normally get this thing for less than $160. Sounds like a pretty good deal for a Magna Cut blade, but you're going to be making a lot of sacrifices for that. I'm holding a Hogue with CNC machine Dark Earth G10 scales, which are fantastic. The Magna Cut version of this knife, at least the base, base quote unquote base model is polymer. That's going to feel like plastic. It's not going to be enjoyable. You're really getting a knife. You know, you're going to be aiming for a knife of the Hogue Deca with the Magna Cut with the polymer just so you can say you have Magna Cut and you can say it's made in the USA. If that's your goal, click off this video, go buy the Hogue. You can knock it out that way. And then you can look at some stuff that has a little bit less features. It's made in the USA. Something like maybe the Kershaw Dividend or the Kershaw Leak both in Magna Cut, both made in USA. Right now on Amazon, I think there's an error on their website, which they have not caught yet, where you can get the Kershaw Dividend for less than $100 Magna Cut. It's not my cup of tea because it's only a flipper. I would like to have a thumb stud, but less than 100 bucks, go for it. And then, of course, if you go on Blade HQ, you can get it for around the same pricing as the Hogue Deca, a little bit more. But like I said, I prefer to have, if I'm going to be spending more than $150 on a knife, I want two different ways to open it. But hey, both of those are made in USA. For me personally, I take out of the running the Hogue Deca. If you can get it with the G10 or something like that, let me know. But my research, at least a, just a quick research I did to get the pricing, is the polymer. I don't want polymer scales in a Magna Cut knife. That's, that's just something that I'm not interested in. Maybe you would be. So then you think about something as maybe you're going to go with a the fixed blade you take a look at something like the bradford guardian just came out i think like 200 bucks you can get yourself a magna cut maybe even a little bit less than that i have the mkc here the montana knife company blackfoot or the speed goat they're both 300 dollars solid knives but they're fixers maybe you want a folder maybe that's not something that you're considering as much as i like this the pricing is still up there but that doesn't mean the pricing is not fair and reasonable that brings me back to the tactile knife chubacabra i am here to tell you from my expertise i may not be a knife expert i'm going to link you down to neves knives he's going to be pumping out a video on this thing soon go check out his channel you may get something from like Metal Complex or whoever else may have this knife early. Those guys are knife experts. I fancy myself to be an expert on pricing. I've been writing contracts, auditing, and reviewing contracts since 2006. I have written and administered over $2 billion worth of contracts. I'm really good at determining when something's fair and reasonable, all the way from the cost of a tire, all the way up to the construction of a hospital. I've written a lot of different contracts. So when I see this price, this knife priced at $249, I see their competitors are priced between $138 and over $500. And when I say competitors, I mean made in the USA, Magna Cut, and also having at least more than one, uh, two different ways to open it. And I'm not talking about OTFs, none of that. I'm talking about folders. This pricing is fair and reasonable. I know that may be hard to swallow, and a lot of times on this channel, I talk about you know buying something that's two uh, two hours of your pay and all that good stuff. This is a conversation for someone who wants a premium knife, but they can't figure out if they're being hosed on pricing. This pricing is fair and reasonable for those reasons. Now I'm going to jump into what I like about the knife, but I really want to dive deep on the market and how this pricing makes sense. The things that would make me spend my money on this knife. And full disclosure, I didn't pay for this knife. Tactile gave me this knife uh, for the purposes of produ producing some content for it. But any content that I produce for it, they don't get to see it before you guys do. As a matter of fact, they're going to be watching this alongside of you for the very first 
time. Now, I get offers for Magna Cut or for just knife reviews or overviews all the time. And nine times out of 10, I tell the company, you're more than welcome to send me your knife. But if I don't like your knife, it probably will never make it to my channel. Even if I do like your knife, it's a low likelihood that it will make it. You know, and I, I'm pretty transparent about that. I've gotten knives from a lot of companies, Vodsteed and Kubi and TRM and so forth and so on, MKC. And there's never an expectation of doing it. But this one drew my attention to the point where I really wanted to talk about it more. Let's talk about what I really like about it. First off, it doesn't have titanium scales. That might be important to some of you guys who are really snobbish on your knives. But for me specifically, I like uh, things other than titanium this has an anodized aluminium scale on it and one thing about this knife is that almost every single part of the knife not only is made in the usa but made in texas so they are heavy on the made in the usa for this knife i believe that the aluminium is anodized in california but everything else the springs the pocket clips they're either made in their factory at tactile or they're getting it from a uh, a distributor in Texas. So this is a truly USA made knife with USA made parts, which is something that I really, really appreciate. The one thing about this is I like the blade shape. I love the fact that you can get it in two different finishes. You can got this like tumbled look, which I think it like, it looks like they ran it through a bunch of rocks or something like that. Kind of gives it a unique styling and look to it. But they intend to bring this out in composite materials such as G10 and Micarta. Let me bring you in even closer. So you got the nice Magna Cut blade on there. You can see the Magna Cut on there. You can see the blade actual, the way the blade finish is. You can get it in a satin finish. I wanted the tumbled look just because I use my knives. And my knives tend to get snail trails. They get marks on them. They, it takes me a while to actually have to clean them off. If we kind of look here at this Hogue Decca, like I eventually start to get marks on my knives, scrapes on my knives to the point where if I don't have time to take them apart and clean them, I, I just kind of want that hidden. So either hidden with a coating or hitting with this type of finish makes me feel a little bit better about it overall. Very subtle branding. It just has tactile here. And the other side, of course, it has the uh, Magna Cut uh, labeling. One thing I will say about the thumb stud so far. So since I've gotten this knife, I purposely have actioned it about 200, 250 times to get myself used to it. I thought I was going to want more jipping. You see the actual thumb studs right there. I thought I was going to want more jipping on the thumb studs, but I've actually been quite enjoying the action so far, whether it's a reverse or it is a, a normal uh, flick of the wrist both of them are able to action pretty easily here we're going to talk about the super lock here in a second because that's the elephant in the room but easy to, to deploy this thing either way we got to talk about the lockup on this thing this is using the super lock a lot of knives are not using the super lock i know the we knife vision r i think is using it although i play with the vision r and you can pull the actual lock mechanism out of the knife you can't do that with this knife and then civivi so we knife also made another version with civivi both of those in my opinion just are not done well and neither are made in the usa but this new lockup mechanism is fantastic it is so strong it's almost to the point where you can definitely pound on this thing the lockup is extremely strong if you needed to use this in a hunting capacity i'm confident at least from the little bit of testing i've been able to do it so far that the lockup is going to be strong now when you have this actually uh, deployed you can use your index to to release the lock or you can use your thumb if you use your thumb to loot to 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 do it, it's going to come down on your index a little bit. You just kind of move your index out the way and then you're ready to rock and roll. If you use your index finger to do it, then you don't necessarily have to worry about that. It just comes down. So I commend Tactile for wanting to actually approach the super lock and to do something with it. The actual CAD or design or the plans for the super lock have been out there by the designer free to use. In my opinion, I, I think that's crazy that you're not making these company pay licensing fees for your invention and for the thing that you came up with but that's just my contract writing mindset so it has titanium hardware t8 screws all around you can get this thing basically completely pulled apart with two screws and you're ready to rock and roll i like the fact it's t8 all around a lot of times you'll see t6s for pocket clips and stuff like that they didn't do that the actual pocket clip is stainless steel so the but the rest of the hardware is titanium and the titanium is also milled in texas uh, so that's pretty cool i mean it's just very well built 
overall, the liners, everything is just, it feels really solid in the hand. So I know that a lot of you guys may be used for premium knives using titanium. This anodized aluminum feels so incredible. It almost feels like a composite material, although it's a metal and it feels really fantastic in your hand itself. And having the actual blade shape along with the actual uh, the thickness of the blade itself or the scales themselves, the pocket clip actually assists. It doesn't really get in your way of it. I do believe though, for the next run of the knives that here, this actual jipping on the actual uh, lockdown to, to release the lock, I think they're gonna bring this all the way up and bring more of that there because that might make it a little bit easier to release the lock. I haven't had any issues with it, especially whenever I use my thumb. But if you're gonna buy this and you're going to use your index, then that might be something that you notice. I prefer to just kind of use the thumb, allow it to come down onto my index and then get my index out the way. Because mainly if I'm using a knife and I have my hand on a workpiece, I normally am using it, I cut the work piece and then organically I just close it with my thumb and then move my thumb out the way. If you're playing with the knife, then yes, you're probably going to use your index finger more. But if you're using this knife, I do believe you're going to use your thumb more just because you're probably using it for breaking down a box, cutting a piece of drywall, cutting some small sheet goods, you know, breaking down, cutting through tape or whatever. When you're doing that, you're trying to close this thing quickly and it will come down on your finger, but it won't get your finger, at least not in my experience. I can't tell you exactly what, how it's gonna work out for you. I'm just telling you first impressions of this thing. I am thoroughly impressed of the way that the knife looks, the way the knife is carrying itself. I like the fact that the warranty with Tactile seems to be strong. Now in the comments, someone's gonna inevitably say, where there's a small manufacturer, he has Magna Cut and he's selling knives for $200 and blah, 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 blah. And I believe that that's a true statement. It's probably a true thing. However, Tactile has been pumping out knives. They started in 2020. They've been standing by their warranty ever since. I've seen it. I have people CC me on emails as they sent an email to Tactile and they were taken care of. I have seen them take care of things, which technically probably wasn't their fault. It wasn't a manufacturing defect and they still took care of it. They also have a sister company, which is called Tactile Turn, which does pins and other accessories. So they already have the machinery to always be doing something. They're always improving themselves. And I like to see that out of a company that's making production type of knives. I think 249 is still fair, but the aluminum scales, just looking at some of the competitors that are 249, I think that the 199 might make a little bit more sense, but there's not a lot of comparison of, for aluminum. A lot of people are either doing titanium and then the price is a little bit more. They're doing G10, but the G10 has like crazy CNC machining. Of course, you can tell here that this anodized aluminum doesn't have crazy CNC machining on it, but it still feels really fantastic in the hand. Am I wrong about the pricing? I'm not really sure. I'm trying to think, you know, sight unseen, if I would have got this into my hands, would I have bought it? I probably would have snagged it for the aesthetics and for the blade still alone. First off, I like the lock a whole lot. I love the lockup system and I love how this thing feels in the hand and how easy it is to deploy. Those are big selling points for me. The Magna Cut is a, is a plus. I, for me, a premium blade steel that is something that I could just mess with for years and years would be CPM 20 CV which is what I have in this Hogue Deca. Can I recommend this thing? Is this a hard recommendation? So here's what I think. First off, if you are in the market for Magna Cut, okay, this is a knife you should consider. Now I'm gonna land the plane on my final recommendation, but I wanna ask the questions. Are you in the ma market for Magna Cut? First off, why? Do you just want it? Do you need it? You know, I don't really seek out Magna Cut knives. Me, like my, my top tier is CPM 20 CV which can be about the same pricing anyways. But um, if you're in the market for Magna Cut and you don't want to pay, you know, the prices of uh, he, he who shall not be said, we'll just throw the, uh, the, the leather sheath up here. If you don't want to pay those prices or you can't get your hands on it, then you may be considering something from Tactile, from USA Made Kershaw, from USA Made Spyderco from Hogue, you're probably not considering anything from Benchmade. If you want something that has composite materials, this obviously is not for you because they don't have it yet in anything but aluminum. So you're gonna go with something else anyway. 
But if you just want Magna Cut and your goal is to get Magna Cut in the USA made no matter what, as I mentioned earlier, go get the Hogue Deca. Be disappointed in the polymer. If you want titaniums of something, I don't know what to recommend you because I don't like titanium scale knives. I wouldn't have accepted this knife from Tactile if it had titanium scales on it because I just don't particularly like titanium scale knives. I love the fact that this is anodized. It almost feels like a slick G10. That's just my opinion. We figured out that I can't help you if you want titanium everything. We figured out if you want to be a, if you want the cheaper options for Magna Cut, We've given you an option. So is this something that is going to be fair and reasonable for your money and you're ready for it? I think so. Here's my recommendation. I don't often recommend this, but I'll tell you this. If you decide you want to check out the tactile, you could always get it. They have a 30 day return window. It has to be in like new condition, meaning get it. Don't slice anything with it. They're going to hit you with a 10% restocking fee. So just keep that in mind. But if you really just want to know, is it worth it? You don't live in the Dallas area. You know, you don't you don't live near a distributor where you can get your hands on it. Then you can always do that. You know, that's just like if you're if you just super duper want to check this thing out, that might be something that you consider as well. But if I was rolling the dice on this just from my little experience I have with this now, I would be pulling the trigger on it especially if it creeps down near that $200 mark. But if this is your first time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of the battalion. If this is not your first time stopping by, then thank you once again for watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.